it's wonderful to know that when you've got these concepts that link with each other. Um, yeah. So Ideal Island, when we think about, I come from the coaching realm, but looking at coaching more from people that actually volunteer and say, you know what, I want to take my life from one point to another. Sometimes when you work with an individual that wants to do that with their life voluntarily, it's quite an easy journey because someone willfully has said, I want to delve into this change thing. It's a lovely process, but I think sometimes we underestimate what change does mm -hmm. to us. I think whether you willfully delve into it or whether you get dunked into it, mm -hmm. there's something that happens to you when you're in it. Okay. So I've, I've deliberately said, you know, that the, the topic is tacking the journey to Ideal Island. I don't know if any of you know sailing, the concepts of sailing. Okay. So we can tackle change, but if you tack, okay, there's something that happens when you deal with resistance. Okay. I'm going to change my life today. Yeah. Tell myself that every day. I'm going to do it today. But I can never seem to do it. Even though I desperately want it, I wish I was strong enough, brave enough, or stupid enough to go after I want. Change is something that I think, whether we like it or not, we underestimate our own resistance to it. We underestimate what sometimes blocks us. The stuff inside of us that just sabotages okay, where we want to get to. But when you deal with change, from A to B, often we think it's this. That's easy, as the crow flies. If I can see where I want to get to, it seems so simple. But it's not. Often we've got to look at the fact that it's actually quite a difficult journey, and we can get off course so, so easily, especially taking into consideration all of the things like disconnect, confusion, all of the stuff that comes <coughs> inside as we're working with our current reality, going towards the one that we want to get to, that ideal island. Okay. And when we're faced with that disruption, we've often got to tack it. You can't just take it head on. You've got to angle it, otherwise you're going to end up off course. So the specific shift thing that I want to, that I want to tell you about or, or just chat to you about is just the frustrations that hit us when we're dealing with change. As we sit with, with the expectation of change, often there's excitement. Okay. It's wonderful. We want this. I'm inspired. And it hits off on quite, a, on quite a high note. We seem, yes, wonderful. Big picture, inspired by it. Maybe I'm a social entrepreneur that's come up with this wonderful plan. Or I've just, I've just you know, gotten a group of people together. And off we go. Until the frustrations are probably not aired correctly. Or there's some sort of a mental um, stigma to things that we're not tackling properly not giving a voice to, and those things are undercurrents mm. that start working against what we're trying to achieve. Now for us, yes, one-on-one -on -one coaching is, is fine, but we often deal with corporates that engage change in a coaching scenario. And then there's this wonderful brief, this vision, this beautiful thing. We want to achieve this. Can you take my team through it? Sure, brilliant, let's mm. do this. And we do all the right stuff as coaches. We sit there and we, and we, we do the grafting up front. A lot of hard work. But then there's, there's all these little things that you only discover when you're in the process. Mm -hmm. Very dynamic process when we talk about change. <coughs> Sad thing for me, and it's interesting, Lars, that you also spoke about this. Sad thing for me is that when people really have to deal with change, I think they don't realize how much time is wasted. Recent study done by Gallup, Singapore office, this I stole, gladly. <laughs> Three and a half days a week wasted in change initiatives. 70% of <coughs> change initiatives fail. Isn't that scary? Mm -hmm. Yes, we spend all this energy, chuck it into change, and then it's wasted, it fails. 
<laughs> Why? Okay, so I tell you what. <coughs> Let's go and engage a coach. They'll help us. Why does it fail? Why do change initiatives fail? We're missing key elements. It's easy to come up with the ideal plan. Mm. It's mm. easy to realize, okay, this is what we want to change. We're fed up with the status quo. Let's change it. But the heart of why we want to change, okay, is missed. It's the same story, Simon Sinek. Why? It's easy to say, that's what I want to change. But the why it needs to change. The fact that there's a human heart that needs to be shifted, a character that's being messed with, is ignored, often ignored. And we thrust people into change cycles, time and time again, <coughs> in major corporations, and we're expecting them to just tick the boxes, nod their heads, and go, oh, okay, cool, I'll just do it again. But we don't often give them the opportunity to sit down, tell their story, and express what it is that they're going through as the change hits them, wave mm -hmm. after wave after wave. Mm -hmm. We don't allow them to be human in the change. We don't ask them how they are in the change. We don't allow them to express. We see them as these commodities that can be shifted and changed and moved. And yes, I get it, business needs to make money. I understand it. And so things have to happen quickly. It's true. Okay. But if the change agents don't understand that those frustrations that stop change from working is about the why that they're not willing to express or discuss or allow, and I know it's inconvenient, and I know it takes a lot of time, but it has to happen. We've got to create that space where people can be people. I'm sorry, Mr. CEO, that it's inconvenient that your people are falling apart because of the change, but we've mm -hmm. got to give them the space to mm -hmm. sit down, unpack, and tell you that they're really, really reeling because of the change. Mm -hmm. No, you don't want to hear it, but yes, mm -hmm. they are. Okay. And when we do that, when they understand why you want to drive this change so badly and you understand why they're resisting it so badly, then possibly <coughs> then and then only will we be able to actually get <coughs> to <coughs> work the change. Ideal Island is a means to an end. The journey is where we grow. We often treat people on their player ratios and we forget that they're people. We expect them every day to show up with themselves suited up. That's what we pay them for after all. And that's fine. But if you treat them as people, mm -hmm. then they'll give you their best play. Mm -hmm. Change is never easy. We fight to hold on and we fight to let go. Bit of a catch-22, I think. But it's all about the journey. And when we allow people to embrace it and we embrace them in it, then we become okay with tacking change mm -hmm. as we reach for ideal. Okay. Mm -hmm.